Mostly out of necessity, women had to um, take a non-gendered specific role when they got to the West. Um, they worked right alongside their fathers and brothers if they had brothers. So they learned to ride and to rope and to handle the cattle very early. And, and, and so because of the setting and the distance from uh, workforce, the girls were the ones who stood in and, and worked with their fathers at the encouragement of their fathers. And so they also worked with the girls to teach them how to ride properly and how to handle the cattle. At first, it, it, when towns started to come, um, started to form in the West and as civilization grew, there was an effort by their mothers to try to instill those Eastern, more Victorian values. Um, make sure that they were wearing long dresses and that they were learning how to do all of the household chores and the domestic um, chore or responsibilities that they had. And so in, um, in doing that, they learned a new norm. And so they kind of put into place a, um, a, a quasi properness, if you will, in, in the rural areas. And so what they would do is wear their brother's clothes or wear split skirts to work on the ranch. But when they went to town, they would change into their dresses and wear their dresses in town. So they were still kind of meeting the greater social expectations, but they're also were pushing back just a bit by riding a stride instead of side saddle, which is something that continued until um, the turn of the century. And um, Again, they just slowly incorporated the change in the dress um, as they started to enter the world of rodeo. Well, for Wild West shows, Annie Oakley is probably the major turning point. And Bill Cody um, using Annie Oakley to show that women could be proper and that women could still be feminine, but she had this uncanny knack with her guns. I mean, she was a Marx person or a Marx uh, woman, a sharpshooter, if you will. And she was accurate, but she did this in a very long skirt. And, um, and, and it was important to her, too, to keep those qualities. Um, when, when he introduces her and audiences just become amazed at the fact that she can do these things and that she can still be a woman, um, we start to see more involvement in, in the other side of this. So rodeos kind of come up simultaneously. And um, by 1904, when Bertha Blanquette enters the first rodeo in Cheyenne as a bronc rider and rides broncs, that door has partially been opened because those women in the Wild West shows had been accepted by the audiences because they stayed feminine. Across the United States, there was a concern as women became interested in athletic events, bicycling, tennis, those types of things, that they would become manly and that they wouldn't be attractive and they wouldn't be able to marry and have families. And so really it's cowgirls who changed that perception, first through Wild West shows and then as they start to um, fill in for cowboys who are injured, um, in Wild West shows, women jump on a horse and fill in, and, and Cody and others see their capabilities as expanded. And so later, not only he, but other Wild West shows add exhibition rides so the women can showcase their skills. And the, we see as rodeo is starting, because they're kind of simultaneous, as rodeo is starting and women are bronc riding, they can do that in both, both places in Wild West shows it's exhibition, in rodeo it's competition. There's an interesting timeline here where Annie Oakley and May Lilly open the door for women as sharpshooters in Wild West shows. Lucille Mulhall does the same kind of on the athletic side with rodeo. She is a natural born roper. She starts very young on the Mulhall Ranch and of course the, the great story that goes with that is that her father told her any of the strays that she could rope, she could have. And her father noticed that her, 
herd was growing at a rapid pace and very quickly stopped that. But he also recognized that she had an uncanny ability with the rope. And so he started to promote her. Um, he had his own, a unique Wild West show combination rodeo troupe because we kind of have rodeo troops that make that transition from Wild West into uh, what we know as rodeo today. And he promoted her as early as 1897. She was very young at the um, St. Louis Fair. He promoted her there. And she was able to um, showcase her roping skills. And she competed directly with the men in El Paso, Texas, when she roped against the men and won. They um, immediately questioned whether she was a woman. They didn't believe that she was a woman and started ripping her clothes off before her brother was able to stop them and um, spare his sister. And so that kind of fame and publicity led, again, audience, audience interest. Um, they were just amazed that a woman could be a cowboy and could do the things that a cowboy did, but like um, Annie Oakley, she did so in very long split skirts that her father had tailor-made for her. You really could not tell that it was split unless she was walking or getting onto her horse because she always rode a cross saddle or a stride um, like the men did because that's how she grew up. And so she makes the transition for women from Wild West shows, because she does a little of both, to competition, to rodeo. And she is a, a great uh, sport, and she's very friendly, and she keeps those feminine qualities. And the cowboys love her just as much as the audience. They are impressed with her skills and, um, in fact, admire her. And she comments that cowboys admire a girl who can ride her horse well.